Oh, hello, I'm Kuljit Bamra, and this is my collection of tabla drums. I've got many, many more lurking around my studio. This is just a few of them. But as you can tell, I love the tabla, and I also love collecting tablas. In this session of Demystifying Indian Music, we'll be looking at this wonderful instrument and exploring together the way that it's played and the way that it's made. Okay, before we get into the nitty gritty, I'd like to share something with you about my own personal journey. One unusual thing about my musical career is that I have never studied music formally, whether it be at school, college, university, or through a tutor or a coach. And my parents tell me that when I was about six years old, I could play very simple rhythms on the tablet that they had lying at home. And when I was about nine years old, they decided to take me to some experts to extend my skills in playing. But what I found really frustrating was that although the people that were trying to teach me were very good players themselves, they couldn't explain things in a way that I could understand. Also, it seemed as though they were forcing me to learn to play a particular way and asking me to memorize long, complicated phrases that would have been no use to me. I just wanted to play the tabla and enjoy myself playing simple grooves. So, after a couple of lessons, I stopped going. I began to learn the tabla on my own by watching people, by listening to them, and by doing my own research. Because I really believe that anyone can play the tabla. Yes, it looks complicated at first, but I promise you, it's not. You can make it as complicated or as simple as you wish. If you can drive a car, you can play the tabla. If you can do a handbrake, your, your clutch, your gearbox, your rear view mirror, your wing mirror, you can drive your tab... We're, sorry, we're filming at the moment. Oh, sorry, sir. Let's carry on. Yep. Yeah, and you actually, in fact, you'll get further on your first lesson of tabla than you would if you're learning to play the trumpet or the violin. And you can begin to enjoy the sounds of the tabla straight away. What a great way to express yourself. Okay, let's look at these wonderful drums. Okay, let's have a look at this amazing drum. This is my one, let me show I haven't. Very funny. This is my tabla, which I travel with. Um, it's a typical tabla, and I can just show you here. Um, you will see straight away that it's a two-piece drum, and a tabla set is always a two-piece drum. And typically, there'll be a larger drum and a smaller drum. The larger drum will make a lower pitch sound, and the smaller drum will make a higher pitch sound. The larger drum is usually played by your left hand if you're right-handed. So that's your right-hand drum, that's your left-hand drum. Usually the larger drum is made of metal. This particular one is made of copper. And um, in the olden days, these were made of wood, sometimes ceramic. But ceramic ones uh, wouldn't last in the travels that I, that I make. You can see also that uh, there are straps that go all, all the way around, and this is the drum head. It's made of goat hide, and this strap that keeps it in tension is about 10 meters long, and it's one length. So it's threaded through the bottom hoop, and it goes up to the top hoop and down again. And so you can imagine, if this head was to get damaged and I need to replace it, it would take hours of work to replace it. So that's the low drum. The right hand drum is made of wood. It's always made of wood. And it's got a sealed bottom at one end and then it's hollowed out, usually about halfway. And again, it's got a drum head which is made of goat skin and it's got the tensioning straps, again about 10 meters long, and it's one strap that goes all the way through. 
The difference between this drum and that drum, apart from size, is this drum is tensioned much tighter than the lower drum, which is what gives it its higher pitch. Uh, and you can see here, there are some corks or chocks put underneath the straps to really tension it. If I, if I sort of, you can see how tight they are. Whereas this one is quite loose. Um, in terms of history, they've probably been around in this set for a hundred years or so. Many historians say that the tabla started off as a log drum. So if I was to do this and hit the join in the middle, you can imagine it starting off life as a log drum. Some historians say that it was cut in half so they could hang a drum either side of their beast in battle. I mean, that still looks a bit like a kettle drum. Now, let us have a listen to the wonderful sounds of the tabla, and I'll talk a bit more about how these spots really give it a character. Sorry, excuse me. We're filming, we're filming. Oh, sorry, sorry. These spots in the middle of the drum look like they're drawn on with a black felt pen, but actually they're not. They are made of a special paste, uh, which is a mixture of carbon, iron filings, and sticky rice and it's applied in very thin layers. I'm not sure if you can see the concentric circles on this one, but the bottom layer is the, the largest diameter, and then they're put on one by one. There's about five or six layers on here. Now, what that does to the sound of the drum is absolutely magical. If they weren't there, this drum would sound like a Congo drum, or a bongo drum, uh, and just to be a bit crass about it, it would sound a bit like tick-tock, tick-tock type sound. But because this paste is in the middle, what it, what it does is it focuses the pitch of the drum so the pitch is very, very clear. And if, I'm to, if I was to play this drum, you'll hear that it's creating a very um, clean sound. Not only is it quite a clean sound, it also resonates for quite a bit longer than a conga drum would. And that's because the paste is in the middle providing a weight which makes the sound linger. Again, the historians that I spoke about say that uh, the weight was put in the middle of the drum to make the drum sound deeper than it normally would, which sort of makes sense in my mind. Originally, in the old days, the paste was made of dough, so they mixed flour and water to create a heavy compound, put it in the middle, and then it made the drum sound very low. Obviously, the disadvantage of that is you get bits of dough flying off while you're playing. On the right-hand drum, the paste has a, a similar function, but because it's tensioned much tighter, you get a very clear ringing sound. To me, that sounds a bit like a bell, almost like a bell sound. Very resonant. And also a pure, a pure pitch. If I was to play it on the edge of the drum rather than the middle, you'll see how pure the pitch can become. Those of you that know about drumming and about the science of drumming will know that a drum would have a fundamental pitch and a dominant pitch. So really, there are two types of open sound on this particular drum. There's an open sound where I hit it in the middle and an open sound where I hit it on the edge. And of course, like most drums, there's a closed sound. Now, for the sake of simplicity, and I know some people might be annoyed with me for doing this, but for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to say there are three basic sounds on this drum. Similarly, on the big drum, I could also say there are three basic sounds. There are open sounds and closed sounds, but one of the unique sounds of the tabla is this sound, which is a magical 
sound. If you hear that sound in a film soundtrack or a club track or a fusion track, you will know it's a tabla. There's very few other instruments that can make a sound like that. So I could say on this drum, there is an open sound and there's an open sound with a slide and then there's a closed sound. And if you just knew that as a basic starting point, you can actually make beautiful rhythms just based on those three sounds per drum. I'll try and demonstrate that. Now you can get as complicated as you want, but I think you can get a lot of enjoyment out of playing something as simple as that. Now I know that looks a bit weird and complicated, and in fact, initially, it does look a bit weird because we're used to seeing drummers doing this with a vertical motion, whereas this is a different style of playing. There's like a rotational thing going on, but there's still a lot of vertical motion. It's more about technique, but once you've mastered the technique, you can really make rhythms of your own choice and there are unlimited number of patterns and rhythms that you can make. So once you've got your hands in the right position and you know how to make those sounds, you can really make nice patterns.